Smith catalog magazine. What it do? Be nasty in the building with my brother Nump Trunk. What's happening? <laughs> Remember back in the day when I was a teenager We wasn't rolling woods, we was rolling up Vegas Now we smoke it by the acre Taylor after Taylor wanna rap a whole zap Just need a pack of raw papers I'm a- <laughs> <laughs> What's up, boy? What's up, brother, man? Long time, baby Long time, man It's been a while, it's been a while How you feel today, man? Great, man. Great. Nice, nice, man Motivated, man Yeah, man, I see the fresh gear, man Fresh you gear, check me out 24-hour litness You know, Mr. 24-hour litness Why, uh, you know, I promote uh, fitness and cannabis Fitness and cannabis it's like Kool-Aid and sugar. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. What you been working on lately, man? Man, I'm great, man. Uh, it's a 2016. Um, I dropped a couple projects. I dropped the Konnichiwa, Fresh of the Year. Um, right now, I got a new song I'm about to drop called Free the Weed. Before all that, I dropped the We Smoke Better Than You. Okay. And I got I hopped on tour burning for the best damn smoking tour. I saw that. And it I was a lovely that. man, I, lovely tour. Like the weed shit has got its own lane now, so I need everybody to like tap in with that. Like it's like I ain't seen it since maybe like when I was growing up. Like Cypress Hill was like and Red and Meth was like the only you feel me touring weed right, artists right, 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 like touring. Right, right, right. So now it's like. Well, you know, of course, Snoop and Wiz is like burn really opened up a nice lane where like cats like myself, right, I got right. grapes can really get on like and do a tour. I you got grapes. Hey. 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 Pull up, turn the scraper in a circle with the block one time. Trying to see who got purple, got purple. I got grapes. Who got purple? I got grapes. You remember that song? I love that song. <laughs> I had that song on my iPod, on my Android, I had the CD. Hey, what's dope now too, in 2016, I'm finally gonna have grapes, so shout out to my, my partner Sticky Fields. I'm gonna have my real strain coming out, I'm gonna be hitting up all the dispensaries, I got my own collective with Sticky Fields, so it's nice, you know. Nice. But Free the Weed, that's my new single I'm about to drop, Free the Weed, and I'm talking about Free the Weed, man, like see, I rolled this up right here. Like, if, if a cat goes into a bar, he can spend like a band on drinks, pop Percocet, pack, pack, uh, pop Vicodins, it's all legal. It's but, all if legal. I'm, but I'm in the same bar rolling up, and then the popo there, I'm going to get a ticket. Right. Cause it, but I bought this legally. Right. Free the weed, that's all I'm trying to say. Free the weed, make it to where we can smoke like in Amsterdam. It's like, it ain't nothing wrong with it, bro. You feel me? Free the Revis. Free. Do it. <laughs> that's, man, that's great. So what is your string going to be called? Well, we're going to do a purple collection right now. Okay. We're we going to get, we're we trying to really get the old school grapes. Once I get that, I'm going to push old school grapes. It's going to be called old school grape nut, old school grapes. It's okay. going to be the real GDP. You feel me? The real hyphy movement grapes. That's right. But uh, for That's the right. moment, there's a lot of purples going around, so we're going to have my purple selections through Sticky Fields and Purple Fields. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was leading into my next question, the I Got Grapes. Yeah. Like, how did, how did that song come together? Oh, uh, man. So in a nutshell, real quick, I, I, I was an engineer at Infinite Studios. For those that don't know, Infinite Studios is where the whole hyphy movement was recorded, mixed, and mastered with Michael Denton. I was an intern there. I ended up becoming house engineer, so I was r- running all the sessions from Messy Marv Disobeyish to E40, uh, my ghetto report card where I got my first plaque, a gold plaque for as an engineer, which was crazy. Yeah, to Rick Rock, doing all this stuff. So I'm running the sessions there. One weekend, the owner leaves. Michael Dinn's like, hey, no, can you run Can you run the studio? I was like, hey, is it cool if I use it, though, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like I'll, I'll do whatever you need me to do. He's like, yeah, it's good. So I finally had the studio to myself. I called the Federation. They came in, and the next thing you know, we're picking the beat, and it just happened. And that night, we went to the club, to Club Ibiza in the town. Right, right. It used to be the little hotel club. We could get a room. It was lit. Mm-hmm. And E-Rock was there. I gave him the record, and he tried to steal the CD. And that's when I knew that that motherfucking record was going to go crazy. <laughs> That's yeah. what you knew was going to take off. Yeah. Wow. So how has that affected, like, your career now? Like, my whole career is based around I Got Grapes. I'm going to keep it a thousand. Like, everybody knows me as Mr. Who Got Purple. I've traveled the world. I've gone to go to the Philippines. I've gone to go to European tours from motherfucking, from, uh... Barcelona, Spain, all the way up to London to doing these music festivals with DJ Shadow just off of that. But see what I Got Grapes did, it made everybody know who I was, but then they also got to peep game and I was just like this, you know, full of energy character where it's like, oh, that's the definition of hype right there right. to where they wanted to bring me on tour to like, you know, like DJ Shadow's like, I need to have Nump on tour. Yeah, Regardless yeah. if I'm just doing one song, I'm like I'm like the host. I'm right. like I'm like the, the spark plug of the whole tour. Right, right. And that's why I always is. I mean, I don't, yeah. 
I always bring that energy, bro. <laughs> I see. I Period. see it. Lately, you've had this uh, new endeavor you've got going on. Oh, yeah. I do with a new, Fizzler. Yeah, I host a weekly show now with TZLR News, which just happened on a fluke. I came in. I brought my brother, Andre Green, back to the office, and they was interviewing him. Yeah. And it was a dry interview, bro. I'm going to keep it a thousand. I just popped up <laughs> like, nah, bro. Like, I started just, you know, I just felt like the interview was like, you yeah, needed yeah, yeah. some more sauce. And they seen that. was like, no, can you come in and maybe do some work? And it, yeah. it all fell in like like that, it's fun to play. So. That's dope. Yes. That's dope. Yes. That shit's dope, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bobby. It's shit. getting better. It's getting better every week. We got yeah, the green yeah. screen. I like fucking with the green screen. It's just like really, it's a dream come true to me to be around like a staff that like wants to do shit that will let me put my green screen shit together. Right, right. Because I'm doing some dumb shit this week. You gonna see I'm about to post it. Yeah. <laughs> flying, flying with bald eagles and shit. I'm getting it done. Right? That's lit. That's you know? lit. <laughs> That's what's up. So um. So I see you got that going on. You got the clothes going on. Yeah. What were some of the like things that influenced you to get into the music industry? Um, well, shoot, man, I was doing a street promotion. Like when I was 16 years old, my big cousin was working for Def Jam, and, and uh, it was called uh, Ghetto Pass Street Promotion in Oakland. I was like 16. I always wanted to be a DJ, yeah. so he would get the free vinyl from Ghetto Pass Promotions, and basically I asked him like, "Can I work for you?" And I'll get free vinyl. Right, and that's right, really right. how it, I got into the game is like behind the scenes doing street team shit. And so basically back in the day, the labels had budgets and the street team was basically young kids that was hungry and they would push the music. They would give the music out to people or they have free posters or whatever. But really what I did while I was ill, I was a young motherfucker going up the telephone poles with the staple gun. Right, right, and that's right. how they knew me as. Because right, right, right. I, I was super on when I used to do this shit. They'd give me some Rossi, some weed, and i just go <laughs> running through all the fruit through Frisco in front of Maritime Hall and put all the poster boards up. And that's how they will all remember to this day. Right, so right. And all the same cats are still in the industry. They're just doing bigger and better things besides the street promo stuff. So that's how I got on. That's what really made me do it. I went on the Hard Knock Life tour from L.A. to Vegas. It was like a, like a, a two-week tour. And I was like, fuck, man, I, I want to do this shit, bro. Right. So, yeah, I went back to school to DVC. I was at DVC doing the music program. Okay. Bro, okay. ask about me at DVC. <laughs> Michael Axon, ask about me at DVC. Because, okay. like, I feel like they always talk about, like, my success story there. Because what I did at DVC was I go to school. I would um, take a class. And right when they do a final, I drop it so I could go take the class again next semester and get free studio time. I basically used it to get studio time once I figured out that tweet. Right, right, right. And then I graduated from that. And, bro, I was like, fuck, I need to do something because I'm done and I ain't got to take it further. That's when I went to the conservatory in Arizona, which is like an expression. Okay. But I, I basically had to move out the bay at the time. At the time of my life, was just like, the bay was too much for me. I had to get up out of here. So, yeah, man. I feel you, man. That's dope. So, what was it like? Being in the center of the hype, you know? like what did that feel like? Man, it felt amazing, man. Like that, uh, being at that age, I think I was like 22, 23, 24 in that range, and I was just like getting paid to party, bruh. Yeah. And the hyphy movement was really what it was. Like if for cats don't know, go pick up Trill TV One. That's gonna be. That's what got me through the whole movement, man. That was our inspiration, because like we didn't have Snapchat. We didn't have any of this shit. Right, we didn't have Instagram, you feel me? We had DVDs. If yeah. you was on a DVD, you was the motherfucker, bruh. Right. That means you was really outside and you was there. Right. Motherfuckers be faking it right now, you know what I mean? They be on the snap, changing the location, acting like they somewhere, or they uh, steal somebody pick, acting like they lit. Like, nah, you could not fake it. To be on the DVD, you was there, and that was like, we would we, we put that on repeat. And I'm, I'm keeping 1,000 wheels during the fizzle movement, so everybody was all the way, you know, we was beamed all the way up, bruh. Yeah. So it was fun. Right. But I just remember, like, at that time, I was like, man, I was moving 1,000 miles an hour, man. At like a 70 miles per hour speeding zone, so I was fast. <laughs> I, I, I believe it, man. I remember seeing you at Berkeley walking up the street with fucking fat knots in your pockets and bags hanging everywhere. He was like, I got yeah. crack. Well, it was crazy, man, because back then we used to go to Telegraph. It would be lit, and everybody would be on the strip. It was like... Everybody was there, all the rappers doing it, you, they'd be there because of Rasputin's, picking yeah, up their yeah, checks. Yeah. But then we had the, the hat store right across the street, and that's how people were selling their up, these CDs and their shirts. Right, right. I was ahead of the game. I got to sell merch because I had I got grapes, so I was making already a clothing line. Right, right. And I was, I was dumping shirts there every week, five dozen, ten dozen, you feel me? So I was always on Telegraph, either collecting a check or doing that. It's just like, it was just the hub yeah. at that moment, was, you feel me? It, it was, was the hub at the was. tattoo shop, that filthy drip. It was lit. Dot mm-hmm. com. Yeah. So uh, I had another question for you. How did you get involved with theme song uh, for Nutshack? The theme song in Nutshack is crazy right now. Uh, I, I just found out it's, it's going bananas on, on, on the internet. Right. It made me into a meme. 
which I don't know what the fuck that is yet. It's just they they draw me hella weird or they put they put hella words behind me. Yeah. But how I really got on with the Nutshack theme music was that it was a Filipino channel called ABS-CBN and it was their show. And they thought about me and they just hit me up. was like, can you make a song? And they documented the whole Uwap and I did the song. And who would have thought like 10 years later that shit was going to go crazy like this? Nice. Nice. That's dope, man. So that's the message to stay consistent, stay focused, which leads to my next question. What is some advice you have for the up-and-coming artists that are coming up in the game? Basically, uh, what I've been believing right now is timing is everything. So, I mean, you know, timing is everything and the time is now. So there's no time for excuses. You got to get in and go and be patient and persistent. I'm living proof of all that shit, patient and persistent, man. I stayed in my lane. I ain't never switched lanes doing what I did. I've always been numb, always kept it consistent of being numb. And, you know, when it's your time, it'll happen. And sometimes it comes back full circle. I'm also living proof of that. And a lot of these OGs doing it that I look up to, like E-40 and, like, the 2 chains, uh, you know what I'm saying, and Juicy J's, and you know what I mean? Like, these cats is all, even Kevin Hart. Look at his, like, you gotta watch these successful people and read their, their watch their YouTube stories. Right, it's, right. It's, it's real spill, man. It's like a lot of hours, man. I'm a family man. I got five kids and I still do this. I have no excuse. I don't ever have an excuse why I shouldn't be at no event, why I shouldn't be pushing my line if I didn't believe in it. So, right. you know what I mean? Right. That's great, man. Yeah. That's great. That's almost as good as my next question, which is what is the best meal you have had this year? Man, this year, fuck. If you follow my I IG, you, you know I eat. You post a lot of shit. Fuck. <laughs> fuck. I, I don't even, I, I top eat so three. much. Top three. Top three. If you uh, had to. I have to say Vegas, Rio Buffet is up there. I like Brazilian Steakhouse. and Like any Filipino food, home cook. I mean, I like my fried fish, the fried tilapia over at Seafood City. I get that. I buy like six of those and just cook my own rice and I go dumb. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. I, I eat anything, bro. Like, I be in the gym every day, but I ain't on no diet. I'm going to try it. Try it. You know? <laughs> well, uh, let everybody know where they can find you, man. Man, so I got a crazy IG debut to put it right here, though. IG is num underscore you underscore film underscore me underscore 24 hour lit. You feel me? You feel me? Take a picture. You feel me? There it is. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, check me out, man. You know, I'm on TZLR News every week, like you said. Um, I do grills now. So, you feel me? The okay. Gorilla Pino, spelled G-R-I-L-L Pino, Gorilla Pino. I just started doing that. 24 Hour Litness. Um, I got my artist, Andre Greenback. I'm about to have him tap in with y'all, man. I just mix and master this whole shit. So, yeah, I still do mixing and mastering. And, yeah, bro. Just, man. Get look it, Look out for that purple feels, man. I'm really going to have purple this year, bro. It's a good look. Hey, what did Trump say? I don't. I, oh, I, I dropped the like. Damn, they dropped the Trump, the Nump Trump. You feel me? The Donald Trump. Right, right, look, right. I be getting all fucked up tweets because they say, "Oh, fuck you, Nump." But I'm like, bruh. But still, I I agree with one thing with Trump, man. Make America great again. Great. Make it great again. <laughs> Not great, great. We are gonna get that great money. <laughs> Make America great again. Please do. I ain't a hater. I'm a multi. Please That's do. That's right. Free the weed, man. I'm gonna give y'all a whiff of that shit for real. I'm gonna let y'all hear it first. Free the fucking weed, man. I swear to God, High Times Magazine, y'all need to come tap in with your body, man. Cause For real? Bro, I feel like I'm the Rasta body. You feel me? <laughs> Bob Marley reincarnated, man. And I, I really feel that this song is going to wake it up. That's right. That's right. Well, shit. It's That's right. right. That's right. Why try to talk like a Filipino? Now? That's right. That is very good. <laughs> now we move back. <laughs> Knocksmith Catalog Magazine with the... You feel me? Alright, bro. You feel the smoke, man. Yeah, yeah. That's right.